Hello, everybody. Uh, so we're going to do another um, uh, volume example um, uh, in this video. So I'm going to do the volume that you see here, um, where uh, there's going to be a region R that's defined by being the region between y equals 1, y equals e to the x, from x equals 1 to x equals 3. Um, and then we want to imagine rotating this region around the x-axis and then find the volume of that. So our first job is going to be, uh, is going to be to understand what this picture is. So let's try to draw what we have here. Uh, let me draw ourselves an axis. All right, so let's it's a little thicker, there we go. So that'll be the x-axis. I'm not gonna draw the y-axis in. I don't think I'll really need it, but I will mark off uh, some values here just so we kind of are, have, a, have a little bit of a, a sense of where we're at. Let's make this x equals zero. I know I wanna look from x equals one until x equals three. I'm not worried that my scale is not perfect. I just wanna get a sense of the shape of this region. Um, then we're going to be rotating around the line y equals 2. Sorry, y equals, sorry. We're going to be looking at, sorry, I should, uh, the, I want to look at the region, which is going to be between the line y equals 1. So let's put that right here. Let's make this a little thicker. Let's make it a different color. All right, so there's the line y equals 1. And then I'm also going to need the curve of uh, <clears throat> y equals e to the x. So when x equals 0, the value of that is 1. So it would be right on this line. And we know an exponential looks something like this. Make it a little thicker. All right, so that's, that's our picture. Um, and then the region we care about is between x equals 1 and x equals 3. So now I kind of have a sense of this region. OK? So uh, maybe I'll make it, let's use a light color. All right, this is the region we're talking about in here. OK? Okay, now here's the part we have to imagine. We're going to be rotating this region around the x-axis. So I'll try to draw this as best I can. Um, what's going to happen, for instance, to this point right here? This is the point uh, 3, 1. It's on that line y equals 1. When I rotate it around the x-axis, if you imagine it going back into the screen and then it'll come back all the way down here, it will rotate around to the point be about right here, 3, negative 1. Right? And its path would look something like this. Okay. Then it will continue on, and it'll start to come forward until it comes all the way around to the front. Okay? We'll get a similar thing over here. I'm just kind of tracing out a couple of points. Then let's look at the point that's, that starts up there. When it rotates around, it'll do something like this. And this point up here will rotate all the way around. This will be trickier to draw. Oh, let's fix that a little bit. I think I can make it a little nicer. So let me, let me judge a little bit. More clearly, let's see, I want to go about the same distance down, maybe to about here. So this point here would rotate all the way around like this. And if I connect these shapes a little bit, we might start to get an idea of what this thing looks like, right? It's like a, um, I don't know what that's like. 
So it's kind of got this, this, it's expanding as we go further down the x-axis. It's got a hole in the center, right? And so these two shapes, these, these circles, these discs with holes in the center, we can imagine that all the way along this shape, that hole in the center stays the same, and the outer radius, the outer circle, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's our region, okay? And that's the thing we want to find the volume of. And remember, our volume formula looks like this. We developed this in the last one. In this case, it's going to be from 1 to 3. And remember, the trick is figuring out what is this area formula. That's the area formula if we slice this thing vertically. It's going to be a formula that depends on x. So depending on which x value I choose in here to slice, I get a different picture or a different area, excuse me. So let's, let's imagine slicing this somewhere. So I'll pick this green spot here. If I sliced this shape vertically right there, the shape I'm gonna get, right, is gonna look just like those two that I've already drawn, right? It's gonna look something like this. Okay. Let's, let's draw this shape over here for a second. All right. So it's without the perspective, it's just a disc like this, right? And we need to know the area of this disc. Well, it's pretty straightforward to figure out the area. There's a circle here. Let's give it a radius of R, little r. And there's a circle, the outer circle. Let's give it a radius of big R. If I wanted to know the area of this circle, I'm going to take, so I'll do area of circle. It's going to be, uh, sorry, let's call this a, a, a washer, right? Like it's a, it's, that's a better name for it, I think, and not to confuse with all the circles we have around. So this is like a little washer, right? It's got a little, it's a ring with a hole in the center. So the area of this thing is going to be the area of the big circle pi r, big r squared, and then we just take away the area of the smaller circle. And if we want to, we can neaten this up a little bit, factoring out the pi, okay? So there's our, there's our area formula for each of these slices, except this is with two new variables, big r and little r. We need these variables to be in terms of x. So let's look at our picture. The first radius, is this distance here, the little radius, right? It goes from the x-axis up to this line, and this line is at y equals one. So that distance is one, and it doesn't change. It doesn't depend on which x we choose. If I choose x over at three, this distance is one. If I choose x at one, the distance is still one. So that one never changes. It's not a variable at all. The bigger radius, that's going to go be determined by the length from the x-axis up to the function. Well, how high is this function? Each point on this function is the, the x-coordinate is x, the y-coordinate is e to the x, right? That's what those points are. So I know that the big radius is e to the x. If I choose an x, the little radius is 1. The big, the big radius is that value of x, if we exponentiate by that value of x, e to that value, okay? So that means my area formula is going to be pi, big R squared is e to the x, so e to the x squared is just e to the 2x, minus little r squared, which is just one, okay? So we've found our area formula, now we can compute the volume computation. Volume is equal to one to three pi e to the two x minus one dx. Let's get a little space. So let's see, we can pull the pi up front. We get one to three e to the two x minus one dx. do this carefully. So I'm going to use a property of the integrals. We can do 1 to 3 e to the 2x dx minus 1 to 3 1 dx. Okay. So let me just make a quick comment before we finish this. 
depending on how much you've practiced integrals already, right? So the, we, we're, we're only been doing this for a little bit of, for a few videos. So I'm, I'm doing this as carefully as possible right now. I'm gonna do a lot of the steps. If you've been practicing a lot, you may already be shortcoming some of this stuff. I'm fully on board with that, fully support it, as long as you've practiced enough to justify it, okay? What I'm gonna do is now I've got two integrals. I'm gonna solve each one of them on their own and then pull the results into this. So I'm gonna do both of these integrals separately off on the side here. So the integral from one to three, I'm gonna do the easy one first, of one dx. The antiderivative of one is x. We evaluate it from one to three. We get three minus one is equal to two. So that piece is just two. Okay, the one, the, the second integral. The next integral, the first integral in the ordering over here, we would solve with a u substitution. And again, if you've been practicing substitution, you might be able to do this one in your head, but let's, let's go ahead and make a substitution. u equals 2x, du equals 2 dx, or 1 half du equals uh, dx. Okay, so my integral becomes e to the u, there's a constant one half du, and I'm gonna change my bounds. When, when x equals one, right, my first bound, if I put one in for x, u becomes two, and if I put three in for x, u becomes six. So I don't need to go back and substitute when I'm done, I've changed the bounds. This is one of the ways I talked about doing substitution. All right, we've got a one half out front. The antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u from two to six. So we get one half, and this will be e to the sixth minus e squared. If we want to, maybe we might like to factor out an e squared. So we'll have e to the fourth minus one. It's debatable whether that's actually simpler. You could also factor it, it's a difference of squares. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. Uh, I don't think any of those versions are necessarily better than the other. Um, one, of, one of the things I like to say to students is that simplification kind of depends on what you're doing. So I don't really know which one's simpler. We just want an answer in this case. Simplification often means what, what's the next step if we we're doing something else with this. A different version might make one step easier than another. Okay, so now I've got my two integrals already computed. The first integral we just figured out is one half e squared e to the fourth minus one minus the other integral, which was two. And I would probably just leave it this way. We could get a decimal approximation if we wanted to, but there's really not much else to do with this whole thing. Um, no convenient simplifications that make a bunch of terms disappear or something like that. And that's it. Okay, that is our, that is our integral. So, uh, or sorry, that is our volume. While we're here, let's, let's get a nicer picture. So I did it by hand because it's always good practice to be able to visualize these things on your own. I know that we always have, or almost always have some kind of visualization software available. I promise you, at least in my experience, being able to do this a little bit on your own it's not that it's important to be able to draw pretty pictures, but when we have these pretty pictures in our heads, intuitions and ideas become easier to grasp. So I find it very, very valuable to practice graphing things. So let's take a look at this thing. Um, I don't know if this will work. Looks like it's loading, there we go. So let me put in, uh, we won't be able to graph this exactly, but I can graph E to the X from one to three. And there's, let's zoom out a little bit. Oops, zooming the wrong way. Oops, all right, sorry about that. I can zoom in now and make it a little bit better. Well, this isn't working great, but Let's rotate it. There we go. We can kind of see it. I don't have as much control as I would like. 
of the zoo. Oh, wait, there it is. All right, sorry, I do have as much control as I would like. Now I can change the scale properly. There's our picture. Okay, so let's go back to, there's the graph from one to three. And as I rotate this around, right, that's the shape I was trying to draw there. What I don't get to see here is the, 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 the central cone. There should be a disc or a, a column in the middle the size of that column. But this at least gives us a sense of what the outside looked like. Ours was solid, and then it had a hole in the center matching the hole at the front. This one, of course, just gets bigger the whole way like a trumpet. Um, but it still gives us a little sense of what this thing looks like as it rotates around, right? Starting from our graph, rotating around the x-axis, we get that. Um, okay, that will be it for this one. We'll do some more videos in the next couple of, more examples in the next couple of videos. Thanks, everybody.